Hi, it's for staying with us now. If you're just tuning in, we're discussing the proposed social media regulation. Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or Wish You Africa One with the hashtag We Show or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 Why am I laughing? Now we still have our guest with us, JJ what you are. Uh, you know what? Let me take some few comments. Um, um, Angela says, um, social media cannot be seen as the middle ground. People behind these companies have their bias, which also affects what they censor as fake or real. Either way, we just have, um, either way, we just have mode of operations. Now, JJ, I was going to say to you that, um, because during the NSAS protests, when they were, you know, a lot of hashtag answers and all of that. I think a, a particular guy now, I can't remember his name, Adamu or something, that called out the CEO of Twitter and saying that he was um, um, putting fuel in the protest by, um, uh, what was it called? Um, what was the word he used? I can't remember what he, what he said. But he, was, he came at the CEO of Twitter saying that he's um, um, agitating. Inciting. Yeah, inciting. Thank you. That was the word. He was inciting the youth. So, um... Whether we like it or not, there are human beings behind these companies like Twitter, Instagram, and the entire social media, you know. So don't you think that if they also have, maybe they bought into um, the, the agitations of young people, they would also tend to like want to um, take sides to those people, like what we saw, you know, because people are even accusing um, even the same um, United States, some people are accusing Twitter that they are biased towards Trump. They don't want him to whatever and all of that. So don't you think those kind of things might exist because they are also, first of all, human beings. They are not machines. So don't you think they can also decide to say, you know what, I want to take sides with maybe a cause that I believe in? That's where believability comes in, right? That's where believability comes in. So there are several media organizations in Nigeria, several ones. And they don't have the same level of... There are people that will watch, that will listen to the news on a media platform and then go to another media platform to confirm if it is true. True. Sure. There are people like that. There are, some, there are some Nigerian platforms that if I hear a particular news, I still have to go to a particular platform to go and check if it is true. Mm. That's where believability comes in. And I'm sorry to say, anybody who believes the <laughs> Nigerian government better than they believe Twitter, they have a right to. But I think if you did a regular start, people would, regular, they would ordinarily trust Twitter platform. Mm. Of course, human beings will always be in charge of enforcing the law. Of course, human beings will always make mistakes. Of course, there are no perfect institutions. But we do know there are there are some crimes and some institutions that, by and large, they are always you, you always trust that they would follow the path of truth and facts. We've except we want to deceive ourselves. We we haven't exactly done that here to that point in Nigeria where I can trust the average Nigerian decision to follow the path of truth and fact, especially when government is a, is, a, is a party in the matter. The other thing is, this whole thing about what if Twitter was taking sides, Hillary Clinton, Joe Biden, several celebrities all around the world were on the path of answers. Mm -hmm. And for obvious reasons, for obvious reasons, they were taking sides with the people's voice. They were taking side with the people's rights to protest. So I don't, there are certain things that should not be up for conversation. Mm. People should have, it's, it's not just enshrined in the constitution, it's, it's one's fundamental human right. You have the right to protest. It should not be something that somebody should say, somebody, I, I, I wouldn't even want to have a conversation about, I don't know what you call it, Adam or whatever it was. I tried to focus on important people and important matters during this particular yeah. um, answer. Thing, so I really didn't pay attention to this person. But I don't think there should be any debate as to why Twitter would make themselves available and try to support the voice of the people as they were expressing it, or the likes of Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden or um, lawmakers in the UK and, and people all over the world being on the side of, of the Nigerian people that came out to say, we don't want to be killed. Mm -hmm. Since forget about even the subject of why they were protesting, their right to protest is sacrosanct. True. It is sacrosanct. And that's what you have to first of all understand and assess, that this is not anybody taking sides. This is, there is no sides when it comes to fundamental human rights. There's only one side. Mm -hmm. There's no this side or that side. And that's, and that's the side what of justice. They stood with that side. Mm -hmm. That's before you even start to talk about the subject okay, of so the JJ, protest. Okay, so JJ, because which was people saying, "Don't kill us." 
Sorry, okay, sorry mm -hmm. to cut you because we're we 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 have very little time left. If you were to propo uh, propose okay. something to the government, because do you even think at all some level of regulation should be present? Mm -hmm. That's the one question. But if you were to propose a that, more there's already there's already regulation. Yeah, which you which you have there's mentioned. Yes. Exists. Yeah, which you have mentioned. So if you were to propose something to the government mm -hmm. about you know how to go about controlling and managing information, what would that superior argument be to say, you know what, this cannot work like you are doing it, but I can propose this and this to you as a government? Number one, look, why are you controlling? Why are you controlling? Why should it be controlling? It's not in your hands. Government should put out the information. If misinformation thrives in the absence of information, one, and then secondly, when a government has been known to repeatedly tell lies. And this is not specific to the APC government. This is specific to the Nigerian government through the years. So it's not an, this is not about APC as an institution or as a or Buari as a, as a president. This is about the Nigerian government through the years, right? So the first thing is for government to look at itself. If you're coming to equity, have you checked your hands? Are your hands clean? Because the government's hands are really not clean. I, I watched a video the other day where the Minister of Information repeatedly was denying that he knew anything about the social media bill. Something that was ubiquitous, it was all over the place. And he was repeatedly saying he didn't know anything about it, he didn't know any, anything about it. So let's, let's make it easy for ourselves. The government should look at itself and ask itself, why are people agitating? What are people asking for? Why don't people trust government? What can you do? Take for instance, you said you, you've ended SARS. People got killed. Who is being prosecuted? I, I've not heard of any any police officer being arrested. The only thing I hear every day is one protester being arrested here and there. Well, today, Lagos State ordered for over 250 protesters, and SARS protesters, to be released. That's not a sign of good faith. So when next week or next month or next year people come out to protest and they refuse to go in, you're not going to blame them for refusing to go in because government again, as with answers, has shown that you should never trust them when they tell you go in, we'll do the right thing. Hmm. These are the things that count. These are the things that make it. Nothing happens in isolation. The reality we face today is they are of the outcomes of the past. They, they are of the, the results of the consequences of the actions that we took yesterday. You've told people to go back indoor. You've told people that you sort their problems. And all you're doing is just arresting these protesters after they've gone in. And then the police that we people people got killed people didn't just die during the protest they got killed nobody has been arrested nobody's been prosecuted as we speak how do you expect me to trust that government how do you expect me to believe that that government would be looking to do the right thing with yeah. respect to regulating my voice I'm, I'm sorry i can't and every nigerian should stand up against it and i should also say though that no matter what the government does you really cannot stop your people from voicing out you can't. To do that, first of all, you have to by yourself dismantle the democracy because it is inherent in, in democracy, you, including a nascent one like Nigeria. The people who must have a voice, they must have the right to express that voice. And social media is just one of those places where they are able to express that voice. And you shouldn't do anything about it, but even if you do, you will find out that you'll be met not just with resistance, you'll be met with the creativity of the people and their ability to mm -hmm. jump over whatever barriers you put in front of them because the voice of people will always, always, always be expressed. Yeah. <laughs> That's an interesting comment. So you have some comments. Um, yeah, so we have a comment here from Sally who says, um, in a world where traditional media can obviously be controlled, we need some level of uncontrolled platforms for democratizing information. Social media ensures um, we have that platform. So I, I think that's largely in agreement with um, what you were saying. I think that for me, um, the question I would ask, because <clears throat> it seems, and it's the same question we, I ask when I say, what is the plan when we go out to protest? So I agree that you have a voice, um, and I agree that we can all protest. But what is the plan? Do we intend to protest until February 18, 2023, um, in terms of, of getting somewhere in this conversation? So. For me, I'm always very solution driven. So if we are at a standstill or at a point where the government says uh, we want to or we can see that there's a need for a social media regulation, can we not then 
um, whether or not, and, and I fully agree, I, we were having a conversation before we went on air about the fact that the problem here isn't necessarily the social media regulation. The problem is a lack of trust between the government and um, the populace. So when we look at this social media regulation, we don't find a place where there is a huge problem. The only problem that I see is ambiguity that says, how do I define these things that causes um, what was the word that was, was used? I think it was embarrass, like to, to embarrass the, the government um, that was put into the bill. So there are all these things that seem very ambiguous. And this, it's in this ambiguity that the government is empowered to then use it for their own um, nefarious you know, purposes, if you want to call it that. So the question I ask is, how do we, let's just say, that the, the social media bill is, or social media uh, regulation goes, goes ahead, which it seems like whether or not we all you know, come out en masse tomorrow, seems like the government is dead set on going ahead. How can we come to some middle ground that says, look, what are we going to do? If you say you must pass this, what voice can we have in that process? I know you say there is no, there's no point, but what there's can no, we actually do? There's no middle do? ground when it comes to expressing my voice as a citizen. There's no middle ground. Hmm. There's no middle ground. And I don't speak for myself, I speak for the average citizen. There's no middle ground when it comes to your ability to voice your, your, your to, to speak your mind as a citizen. There's no middle ground. It's not a negotiation for, we're not discussing, um, you know, trying to negotiate with terrorists, whether if they stop killing, you, you give them 20 years. We're negotiating human rights. We're, we're nego negotiating free speech. There's no middle ground for that because it's not even negotiable. Right, so government can go out of its way to do what it has to do. I'm hoping that the Nigerian criminal justice system will be able to stand up against it. If when people go to court and say, "You just these are these are things you just cannot do," but even if the Nigerian criminal justice system doesn't do it, let's not even forget that the internet is not in the control of the Nigerian government. There are several governments that have tried to run the internet to control it. What's happened is that the diaspora stands up strong against them and they embarrass them immensely. And I really don't think that the Nigerian government and the people in the Nigerian government want to put themselves in, in such a situation where they, when they travel out of the country, they are dragged by its international organizations, they're dragged by all these multilateral organizations, and even the Nigerian diaspora asking them, why are you gagging the voices of the Nigerian people? But I need to say again, there's no middle ground. And then someone mentioned that, um, are people going to protest in February 2023? I don't know. It's not my decision. I think that there's room for protest and there's room for going to sit down to plot, to, to strategize, to know what you will do. But I'm not going to tell people, oh, go, don't protest again, whatever. I feel like it, it, it's an individual decision. And for those that, that have been able to form groups when they do these things, also they will sit down and have that conversation. I think that, I personally think that there's room for protest where you you give voice to an issue, you have that issue amplified and you bring that issue to the fore. And there's a place for now sitting down to ensure that the things that you ask for are now deployed in, in policies and laws. And sometimes those things don't happen out there on the field. So I don't personally expect that people will continually be out there protesting. That's not my strategy as a person. But I also respect the rights of anyone that insists that they want to they want to protest from now till, till, till the end of time. It's within their rights. It's yeah. just within their rights as citizens of Nigeria and as human beings. Okay, so this is a comment from Rola Ke. She says, we need some bit of control and should have clarity on what control means. We have too many fake news as well as transparent views, but it's, it cannot go on without some form of control. So this person says, I stand by control. That's this person's comment here. And you know, my thoughts on this or listening to him and listening to everyone who is on this table now. My, my thoughts on this is that the foundation of it all is what he mentioned, you know, trust in the system. That I think is the foundation. You know why I say this? I say this because I've met some people who have not taken a look at the social media bill. They've not taken a look at the hate speech law either. And they just say, you know what, at this point, what is important is the motive. Why is it coming up now? Why is it coming up amidst so, so, and so things? And it doesn't even matter that, oh, the foundation of it, of this law, or at least speaking of the social media bill, is that it should be false. You know, when you say it should be false, like I said, it means we need to go to court to prove that it should be false. And if it's not false, 
ordinarily, you know, people shouldn't really feel, you know, uncomfortable with it. But because there's the challenge of trust, of that line between false and true, and finding out what truly is going to be the outcome of it, that's why I find that a lot of people are agitated. And, you know, one of the things I, I think, now this is just a comment, one of the things I think about this is that um, generally when it comes to passing a law, the voice of the people really matters. And I find that even if this law, even if the government is looking, even if the government is looking at passing this law with good intentions, or, you know, to actually, you know, even if, now, assuming but not conceding, as we usually say, mm. now, assuming that the government is looking to pass this law with good intentions, I find that the people, and we're not in that state, the people are not in that state to receive the law yet. The people are not in the state so to go back. trust the institutions yet. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, let's work with what we already have, because this looks to a lot of people like a winch on process. I think the government is for us. I mean, the National Assembly is for us. They are people, they're representing us. I think these voices of the people, the voice of people, we say is the voice of God. So I think the voice of people matters. really matters. Okay, so JJ, because we have one minute to go we want to give you the last one minute if you had something to say to the government right now we know it is not right i mean this social media bill i for one i don't i'm not i'm not here for it at all but we have to do our job so but if you had something to say to the government what would that be you know and what would you also say to the people because let's not forget as well that part of what we need to do as a people is to be responsible for what we put out there on social media I miss all the NSAS protests and all of that. Lessons learned where there were a lot of people that had agenda that spread a lot of fake news amidst all of those things in, that, that were, they were mixed up with the, the truth. So how can you talk to the people, citizens' responsibility, and what would you say to the government? Then we'll wrap up there. To the government, I would say that uh, ask the Nigerian people, if you don't know, ask them what their problems are. And that would be very, very easy for you to know exactly what to prioritize. And if you do ask them, I can assure you, social media bill will not be on the last on the list of their problem because it wouldn't even be on the list. They'll talk to you about poverty. They'll talk to you about the educational system, the absence of water, insecurity, maternal mortality, child mortality, oh. power, mm -hmm. all of those things. You know, address them. When you address them, you wouldn't even have to bother yourself about social media because people will start to talk about the fact that their lives are getting better. When you start obsessing about controlling people's voices, people should wonder, why? Why are you obsessing? Is it because you're not doing what you're supposed to do? So government should do what it's supposed to do. As for the people, really and truly, there's always a cost to putting fake news out there, hate, hate speech out there. People, people have lost their admission on account of the things that they posted on social media. Schools have admitted people. Then people have shared the things that those people posted, and they've lost their admission. People have been arrested and prosecuted and sent to jail on account of the things that they posted. So you might have this feeling of anonymity and this feeling of power and freedom because you have access to social media. But there's always a cost. It, cost, it, it can cost you legally, it can cost you socially, and it can cost you professionally. And in every other way, people have lost their jobs on account of things that they posted on social media in Nigeria and abroad. So don't even get it twisted. There are costs to misdemeanors and using social media for criminality. And even though we're beginning to have this conversation because of the Nigerian government about some social media bill, the laws already exist and you better be careful so you don't get caught on the wrong side of the cyber crimes law and associated laws. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I think that's a fantastic way to wrap up. <laughs> Thank you, JJ, for joining us this evening. And we hope, we, we hope the government is listening. We hope we are also listening because there's the responsibility that we have to hold ourselves accountable. Because to social media is such a powerful tool that you also don't want to mess mess it up you want to be sure that whatever you're using it for it is to drive the greater for the greater good of nigerians that's what i think should be at the back of the minds of every young person on social media so we continue to push for good things like he rightly said there are many problems that we have and if the government fixes all those problems will not will not come at you on social media all right so please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m it's been a very insightful conversation heated a little bit but good <laughs> Keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at Way Show Africa One or at Plus TV Africa as we continue to hear what you're saying. And in case you missed today's quote, well, I guess I agree with Tito. 
but it was not me that said it was jb <laughs> it says content is fire and social media is gasoline <laughs> all right so we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m as uh, oh sorry on friday oh it's oh, sunday friday, we'll see you friday at 8 p.m as we bring another great conversation to your screen enjoy your evening bye <laughs> thank you jj